All right, everyone, today we're going to go over some examples for compositions of functions for your delta math assignment. The first one is on visual composition functions. You're going to be given two functions, f of x and g of x, and you're going to ask, you're going to be asked to evaluate f of g of x or g of f of x at a specific value. So here we have uh, the inner function, which is f, and the outer function is g. You always do the inner function first. So you are tasked to figure out what g of f of negative 3 is. So first what we need to do is we need to figure out what f of negative 3 is. So your input is negative 3. So you look at your graph on the x-axis. Here is negative 3. The y value at negative 3 is negative 5. So f of negative 3 is negative 5. So essentially this problem is asking you to find g of negative 5. So you look at the g graph on the x-axis, negative 5 is here. Now you need to find a y value. So g of negative 5 is negative 4. All right, so let's do another problem. So here we're asked to evaluate f of g of negative one. So let's do the inner function first. So g of negative one means you look at g, you find where negative one is, it's right here. The y value appears to be at one. So this is the equivalent of saying f of one. So you look at the f function. When x is one, the y value is four, right? F of one means find the y value when x is one. The y value is four. There you have it. So for the second skill, you need to know how to find the composition of functions. So here, let's do an example. Bring in another whiteboard. So we're asked to find f of g of negative 3. This notation is different than the way that we do it in class. This essentially means f of the O oh, means of g of negative 3. All right? Find the value of f of g of negative 3. So we need to do essentially the inner function first. Let me color code this to make it g of negative 3. OK. So a couple ways that you can do this problem. First, you can evaluate g of negative 3 first. So what you do is since this is g of x and this is g of negative 3, whenever you see an x, you're going to replace it with a negative 3. So you're going to copy and paste negative 4x minus 6, but you're going to replace it with a negative 3. Then you compute this, aka you evaluate this op uh, these series of operations. So this is going to be f of negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. 12 minus 6. Is 6. So now f of 6. It's straightforward. All you need to do is replace the 6 with the x's here. 
So take the six, plug it in x. So this will be six squared. Then you plug it in this x as well. So it's going to be six squared plus six minus two. So 6 squared is 36, plus 6 minus 2. Um, couple operations that you can do, you can do 36 plus 6 first, or you can also subtract first. 6 minus 2 is 4, and 36 plus 4 is 40. So these problems are very similar in concept. Just make sure that you plug in negative one as your x value for the inner function first. So in this case, you plug it in for x. You figure out what that number is. That will be your output. And then you plug it into g of x. So we can do this uh, extra example. <clears throat> Let me color code it as red and green. So in this case, f of x is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. g of x is negative x plus 2. And what you're asked to find is g of f of negative 1. So you do the red part first. The red part says you take the negative 1 and you plug it in for x. So it would be 2 times negative 1 squared minus 7 times negative 1 plus 3. So this would be g of negative 1 squared is just 1. A negative 7 times a negative 1 is a positive 7. So this will become 2 plus 7 plus 3 which is 12. So this is like saying g of 12. Now that you have this as your input, you take the 12 and you plug it back into negative x plus 2. So it's g of 12 will be negative 12 plus 2, which is negative 10. So now we need to do the last example, which is on composition of functions with an x. So, so far we're using values for numbers, but now we're going to replace them with an x. <clears throat> so let's color code this as well. f of x is negative 5x plus 14 g of x is x squared plus 6x minus 7. So here, our outer function is f, and our inner function is g of x. All right, just keep that in mind. We're taking the g function, and we're substituting it, that in for the f of x. So what we're doing is we're taking g, all of it, and whenever you say next in the outer function, you all you do is you replace it. So in this case, you take, all I do is I copy the f function, the function that's in red. And whenever I see next, I replace it with a parentheses because I know that later on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace whatever that's inside the parentheses with the inner function, which is g of x. So now that we have substituted that in, we need to distribute the negative 5. Um, if you don't do this and you just type it in like this, delta math will mark you wrong. 
or incorrect. So negative five times x squared is negative five x squared. We need to distribute the negative five to the six x as well. So negative five times six will be negative 30 x. And then a negative five times a negative seven will be a 35. positive 35. Now we need to combine like terms. These two are like terms. So what we need to do is we need to combine them. Everything else stays the same. Negative 5x squared minus 30x. 35 plus 14 will be 49. And that should be our final answer. So when you type it in to delta math, so negative five x, to get the exp exponent symbol, you press shift six on your keyboard, to get a two minus 30 x plus 49. There's also a keyboard here. And you also press this button to get the x squared as well. So what you can do is you can just type, whoop, and you're there. And that's how we do that problem. So this problem is very similar to the one we did before. So sometimes on delta math you get a problem like this which is much more complicated than the previous one so we'll do this example together so f of x is 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 and g of x is 2x minus 4 our outer function is f our inner function is g So in this example, since g is your inner function, you take that, I'm gonna box it, and you plug it in here and here. So this time we're actually substituting the g of x uh, twice. Wherever we see an x, we replace it with that. So I'm gonna copy the f function, and I'm gonna replace the x's with a big old parentheses. So remember, we're replacing the x with 2x minus 4. All right. So we need to put this in standard form, which is slightly annoying because one, we need to keep in mind that we need to do order of parentheses first. So we need to do this operation first. We need to FOIL this then multiply by two. And then we also need to distribute this. And at the end step, we need to combine like terms. So let's do this operation first. And let me box it in light blue. So I like to put a square bracket because whatever we do here, we're doing it twice because we're multiplying. So when we do two X minus four quantity squared, what we're doing is we're doing 2x minus 4. Let me do it in green. We're doing 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 4. So that is just a habit that you need to get used to. When you see a square, what you're doing is you are rewriting it out twice and then foiling. So now here, all we need to do is distribute the negative seven. So negative seven times two is negative 14. So negative seven times two x is negative 14 x. Negative seven times negative four will be a positive 28. Then don't forget the minus four at the very end. 
So, one, a common mistake is not distributing the negative seven to both. So make sure you do that. <clears throat> and now we need to distribute this, right? We need to do two X times two X. Two X times two X is four X squared. Then we do two X times negative four, which is negative eight X. So notice that we're doing it twice here. So first outer inner, so we do the negative four times two X, which is a negative eight X. And last we do negative four times negative four, which is a positive 16. Need a lot of space, so I'm gonna zoom that out. Oh, and don't forget we have the negative 14x. And then we can what we can do is we can combine we can combine like terms right now. So 24 minus or sorry, 28 minus 4 is sorry. 28 minus 4 is 24. So we got that. So every single step, what we're doing is we're also cleaning up, right? So notice that these two are like terms. So what we can do is we can just combine them. So this is two parentheses, four X squared minus, well, negative eight minus eight is negative 16. So negative eight X minus eight X is negative 16 X plus 16 <clears throat> minus 14 X plus 24. So we're almost done. We need to distribute the two to all of the green terms and then we combine the like terms. So 2 times 4x squared is 8x squared. 2 times negative 16x is a negative 32x. 2 times 16 is a positive 32. So we got that. <clears throat> Now let's find some like terms. There's a negative 32x and a negative 14x. 8x squared minus 8x plus 32. So negative 32 minus 14 will be a negative 46x. And then a positive 32 plus a 24, so 32 plus 24 is a 56. All right, it took us a long time because we needed to FOIL that. Let's hope, let's hope that that's correct. All right, it took quite a long time. Um, when you do these problems, just make sure that you, when you see a squared, you read write it out twice, expand it, foil it, make sure you distribute the negatives properly, and also make sure that you distribute the number in front, the coefficient, to each single term. And at the very end, combine like terms, or you can do what I do, which is to combine like terms as we go along. So for instance, we could have combined 28 minus four here. Um, this person waited until the very end um, to combine everything, which is fine too, right? Um, so try out the problems and you should be good.